South Carolina. God's country up here. I heard. It is. A lot of a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of iconic things going down here in Pickens. Yes, there is. And I think this is probably one of the best kept secrets, though. The market is a build. Tell us a little more about this place. I know I know what we're going to do if we go inside, but let's build it up. So. Oh, yeah. This, um, I guess it used to be a meal, but now it's like an inside jockey lot. Love it. Like, and if you're not in South Carolina, we call flea markets jockey lots. Yes. That's a South Carolina thing. This thing is massive. Oh, it's huge. Uh, and it's packed with vendors. They're open certain days of the week. We'll go over all that, but uh, there's somebody inside that we actually came to see. Can you tell us who we're going to be hanging out with today? Yeah, um, I'm sure some people around here might know him as Jack and Ed. Jack and Ed. Around the around Pickens is the name of their show. Um, great guys. I think you might have seen the promo. Yeah. Um, Man, I'm excited. So it's, it's, uh, they do online. Is it also a radio station or is it just online? Yeah, podcast, uh, uh, the local station. So broadcast, podcast, yeah. and uh, they're right inside. Oh, yeah. Well, they're deep in there. It sounds like we're going to have to go on a mission. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Good morning, Pickens. I'm Jack. And I am Ed. We're coming to you live from the Mill Crate Studios high atop the market at the mill. And here's what we have going on around, around Pickens. Pickens. All right, now for the main event. Tracy, Sunshine, Tracy, yes, how y'all doing? Hey, good. <laughs> so, you guys own the Pickens County New Hope. Back the shoulder of hook. Yes, sir. See, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Oh my goodness. It's the extra cameras. Maybe, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, we can always blame it on that. It's uh, chilling on A-Rob's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, hey. It's all good. That's right. Total exposure. Yep, no pun intended. <laughs> so you guys started Homeless Shelter. Yes, sir. Uh, six months ago? Eight months ago? How long has it been? About five months. Five months? Okay. About five months. Okay. Okay. Five months yeah. All right. It's been hard to track time with all this stuff going on lately. I barely even know when it is one day. Um, so, where did the vision come from to open the summer shelter? Well, the vision actually came from my life. Mm -hmm. It's based on my life. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I've been, went from this, uh, you know, like a regular child. Then things happened in my life, and it made me like when my father died, it hardened my heart. And I, that's when I turned to the streets. Like I said, go to school, run the streets, as my mom would say, ripping and running the streets. But uh, the ripping and running the streets turned into not going to church, but falling in love with the drugs, the alcohol, and just hanging out. Right. And a lot of things happened, like when I witnessed. One of my uh, family members get shot and killed. Then I saw my other cousin get hit by a train, and it messed me up for life. After it messed me up, we, we kind of moved to Allison. And that's when, and I started doing good for a while. Mm -hmm. And my nephew got murdered. And that really messed me up. And I went back to the streets. And when I went back to the streets this time, the first time my jaw got broke, and my wife told me, if anything else happened, she gone. Well, a couple months later, the house got shot up and she left. So that's when it went from ripping to run the streets and just hanging out to survival mode. And during that survival mode, I caught a lot of charges. And I was on the run from the police and I went inside this homeless shelter. And it was in Allison, it's called Haven of Rest. And it's based off of, you know what I'm saying, the foundation of God. And so I got to find my strength and my foundation of God. I already had a foundation because I grew up in church. But I strayed away after my father passed. Because after my father passed, instead of more like a man of God, man of God coming to raise me up as a man, the streets raised me. Right. But anyway, back to the other part. Um, when she left, you know, when you got a good woman, man, and you, she leaves, she takes everything. I ain't talking about taking cars and stuff like that. She takes you. And I lost myself. It started off with small crime, like uh, walking in the bylaw and just making a sandwich just to feed myself. 
actually surviving in the streets that we gang and stuff. And I called a bunch of salt and batteries, attempt to kill and all that stuff, and I was on the run. Like I said, I ran into a uh, haven arrest. They taught me how to take away the drugs and alcohol and put God in my life. And then God started getting on to me. So I turned myself in. When I turned myself in, I was facing 25 life. Wow. But when I turned myself in, they dropped all the charges. But I had to go to prison because while I was doing all these things, I was on probation. So I had to go down the road. But as I was going down the road, I made a promise to God, I pro if you keep me safe and let me get out of here with a scar on my body, I will do your will. But while I was in prison, he gave me this vision. The stuff that I went through, now I got to help others. Right. I said what you're talking about. But when I got to prison, I didn't let prison change me in a bad way. Right. I got to prison, I got my GED, I got I took all these classes, like church classes and stuff like that. Um so when I got out, I went back to the Haven Arrest. And I went there for two years. And the whole time I was there, I was looking for my wife. I ain't seen her in eight years. But I come to find out why God was changing me, he was changing her at the same time. So it was about two weeks before I had to graduate Haven Arrest. She called up. She called and said, you know, she wanna work things out. So that's when we got together. Nice. But after that, I tried to find my way. I tried I, I did not want to go back to the streets because I made a promise to God. Right. So we opened up a couple of thrift stores and this little man kept coming in the store. Come find out he was a pastor. So he invited us to his church. We went to a church, it wasn't nothing I thought it was. It wasn't with four people. Me, and my wife, him, and his wife. But I was asking God what was going on. But he said, just be patient. A couple months later, the pastor died when he passed the church on to us. And as you know, a couple months went by, we said, you no, know, you know, preaching, telling my story. Because the only members we had was people coming out of the woods. Because we served food on Sunday, so they come out of the woods. So I was preaching one Sunday, and this guy came up to me and said, I want to change my life. So he accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But he said, I got one problem. Now I got Christ, but I live in a crack house. I want to get help. So we put him in our car, and we tried to drive him, try to find him help. But in Pickens County at that time, there was no emergency shelter. We got shelters around here, but we don't have an emergency shelter where they can walk straight in. Right. So that's when God laid it on our heart. And we had to go through a lot of battles, but that's when he told me, build this shelter and change lives just like I changed your life. And that's what Pickens County shut the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That's uh Everything works out, you know. If you just just let it go, yes. Give it to God. Everything always works out. Yes, it does. And, and yeah, I, I don't know. I can't ever stress that enough. I you know, know right? Um, so and you're talking to a man that went from a drug addict, alcoholic, to the street life, to a pastor, right? And to losing your wife, you getting her back. Yes. Yeah. You know, playing so long. <coughs> Lose a part eight years. Wow. Wow. And I tried suicide. I tried everything. And I wonder why all these things was happening to me. But he said, all these things are happening just to show other people that they can make it through anything. Right. It's not about me. It's about everything's about God. Right. Wow. So what were some of the um, battles and obstacles that you had to face getting the shelter open? <laughs> oh. Um. Ooh, where do I start? So we actually signed the lease um, on our building in May of 2018. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we didn't actually get our renovations completed until March of this year. So from May 2018 up until this year, we had a month of rent payment that we had to pay on the building. We had a power bill payment that we had to pay on the shelter building. Um, 
all those things had to continue during the renovation process. And then that's not even including the expenses to renovate the building. Right. Um, at the end, um, it ended up being over $300,000 worth of renovations that were done on this building. Um, and like he said, he's a pastor, so we had a church to oversee, our home to oversee, trying to get the shelter up and running. We got our certificate of occupancy on a Friday. That following Monday is when they shut the schools down because of coronavirus. So here it is, we fought all these years to finally get the renovations completed. And then once they were completed, it we're shut stuck. Exactly. <laughs> we shut down before we opened. Yeah. Um, so it took us about two weeks to actually. I just want to say thank you. Um, to everybody who has supported us, yes. to all our sponsors, thank everybody you. who supported to our ministry and the shelter, we just yes. want to say thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And we also want to say thank you to y'all. Absolutely. Yes. We really thank y'all so much for helping us get this out. Yeah. yeah. If you have something you want to talk about, just let us know. Yeah, or, if, or if you have any like instantaneous needs, or like uh, this is like a, an oddity that we haven't had before and we have this need right now, yeah. we'll get it out to our audience. You just let us know. We'll get it out. And Awesome. Oh, that reminds me, if you have something, if, if you want to be on the show, we're booked, uh, are we in October now? Oh, yeah, we're not. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, so, if you got something that you need talked about by the, before the end of the year, get a hold of this quick. <laughs> yeah, now is your time. <laughs> what an amazing visit, Solo. Man, that was amazing. Uh, you know we're going to come back, right? Yeah, so we came to the uh, the mill, the market at the mill, on a day when they're not open. So we were teased by walking past all the vendors and the cool stuff they have. We got a great interview. I mean, it was amazing oh, yeah. hearing the story with the Tracys and Sunshine and about their uh, uh, shelter. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like this episode is missing a little bit of something. So maybe we'll, we can put this out and come back and revisit when they're open and do a second. Oh part. yeah, we're gonna have to. Like, this is like a hidden gem. Yeah, like, I mean, I was, a, it's amazing. There were so many things in there that I was just dying to have, and my wallet probably <laughs> thanks me that they were closed today. So uh, We might not have made it to the interview if yeah. they were open. Yeah, I, I It would have I been agree. one of those, where, oh yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there, record yeah, right. everything, that's but right. we're buying up everything they have here. Huge thanks to Around Pickens uh, for letting us come in and invade their space. Uh, we got some amazing footage, we got to hear an amazing story, met some great folks. And uh, hope to be back. Actually, I guess we will be back because we're scheduled to be guests in yes. October. Uh, October. We'll yeah. be scheduled to come back and be on the Around Pickens with Jack and Ed. So definitely keep an eye out for that. That's going to be a great show also. Heaven only knows what we, what upstate culture will have done by October. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. yeah we can... Maybe they'll ban us by then. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing my luck? Yeah, they probably yeah, right, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> They love banning me, but uh, man, another great episode. Yeah, ep excellent episode. Uh, thank you for tuning in as always. Uh, Josh and I are out there trying to, to get to the sweet spots for you, do a recon and check it out for you. And again, today we were hanging out with uh, Jack and Ed at the uh, Around Pickens radio show. They're all over the internet. And uh, we'll come back and check out the mill, the market at the mill here in Pickens, South Carolina when they're open. Please subscribe, like the video, and... Uh, yeah, that's good stuff, man. I know. I'm looking forward to coming back already. Like yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Make sure you subscribe, YouTube, See follow ya. us on Facebook. Yeah, interact with us on Facebook. Tell us what to do. Love you guys. Peace.